You keep practicing, you're putting in the time, but you're not getting better. Let's find out why and get it fixed. Metal Pace Monday! All right, so a couple quick updates and some notes before we get started this week. A lot of you have been reaching out, and it's always cool to hear from you. Um, you guys drop me a line about lessons, um, questions about the channel, about gear, things like that. It's always cool to chat. Uh, I'm going to let you know that the best way to get a hold of me, if you're looking to reach out, is Rodney at RodneyMcGee.com. It's also my website where you can find uh, what's going on with me and any updates. But that email is always going to be the best to get a hold of me, and email is the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, lately, I've been getting a lot of messages coming through like Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I talk to you guys in the comments. I'll get messages at two different email addresses, things like that. And it's getting a little hard to keep up with. Uh, it's a little overwhelming at times, honestly. Uh, it makes it hard for me to know who I've talked to, when I've responded because somebody said something here, but then maybe they also emailed me or I'll get a flurry of messages on Facebook all at the same time and things get missed or I don't have the right information here and there. Anyway, I need to really centralize it and make sure that I have a record of who I've gotten back to and that it's one stream coming in and out. So Rodney at RodneyMcGee.com. If you're, like I said, looking for lessons, anything like that, and as far as Facebook or Instagram or things like that, it's going to be really limited replies just here and there. I'm just not able to keep up with all those different streams. So I can't always guarantee a reply if you try and grab me through there. So if you want to chat, email down below. And patrons, as always, you can just get to me right through the, the regular system in the messaging box. That one I always get alerts for. Subscribestar isn't as good about it, even though I kind of prefer them to Patreon. But uh, I do check in on it and keep up with your messages there and everything. So you guys are good on that one. And thank you to my patrons. Uh, you guys are going to have, like I said, some new stuff coming up here soon. And we're going to uh, do a little bump up in how I'm handling the patron channels and stuff and probably get a big glut of content you guys are waiting on. So let's get to the subject at hand. So I wanted to start with a couple practice tips and really get you guys in a focus of one, how to do better at what you're working on right now, how to fix some of your practice habits and figure out why you might not be progressing. And I'm also looking at making a couple of changes on the channel, or at least on Metal Base Monday, uh, just for a little while, because I feel like we've done a lot of study and a lot of talk and things, and I want to get into some more playing stuff. And it's probably going to be the dominant thing, probably like each week, some kind of playing example. So I want to make sure that your practice is on and you can get the most out of it. So here are the major reasons why you're not getting better. I know a lot of times you think you're practicing, but playing is not practice. A lot of times we sit down and there's this fog of, well, I'm going to practice. But there's no plan. There's just, oh, well, I'm going to work on this song. Even that's kind of foggy. Or I'm going to work on my technique. Or I'm going to... But there's no hyper-defined plan. And the less defined what you're attacking is, the more likely you are to fail or just not get to the point of it. And if you're just playing songs, even if you're trying to work on a song or rehearse it or something like that, that's still not practice. That's just memorization, things like that. Practice. This is a new definition for you. Something you consistently do to work on something you're not capable of and take it a step at a time until you've mastered it. That's practice. Everything else is just playing. So keep that in mind. And, you know, we all love to play. That's the whole point. But make sure that when you sit down to do an hour of practice and you have that regimented out, that you practice during that part. No wandering, no messing around with stuff, no looking around for tabs, things like that. Make sure you're focused on what you're doing. And we're going to talk about that here in one of the other pieces. But make sure you're on point, you're on mission, and that you're not in this kind of fog of war thing. Because if you're not addressing a specific topic, you're not actually practicing. This is one that I find is 
probably the big killer. Uh, I know so many people that will tell me about their practice schedules or students I work with or things like that. Consistency is what gets results. Nothing else. That's it. There is nothing else that gets you results. I don't care how much you practice on one day or how much you did on this. It's a well-known kind of psychological thing that they say with anything, it takes 30 days to create a new habit. So what does that tell you? It tells you that your basic kind of setup as a person is that you have a level of resistance that your mind and your body are going to put up a fight until you've done it consistently every day for a while, and then you get a changeover. So what does this mean for our practicing? It means that you can't take three days of not doing anything and then all of a sudden go, oh, but I practiced for four hours this one day and I made up for it. Two things you can't make up for. Lost sleep, lost practice. Doesn't work. Uh, you know, if if you've ever really gone a long shift or something, you'll be exhausted and you'll sleep, but you can't make up that sleep. Odds are even when you got up, uh, you know, following, you were still tired. You don't wake up refreshed like, oh, I finally got all that sleep back. Doesn't work that way. Same thing with practicing. You're creating a new habit. It's not just learning something. You are developing habits. So habits require relentless hammering. So you've got to do them a piece at a time every time. It's better to practice a half hour a day than five hours one day and then nothing for four or five days. That's the fact. So regiment yourself a schedule. Put in something where whatever it is, you do it consistently as much as you can. And, you know, we all have lives. Things happen. You can't do things to ridiculous commitment. But jump back on as soon as you can and... Consistency is key. You know, taking it one step at a time up the ladder is going to do it. Because again, in one single practice session, you have a cap of what you're willing to take in. And you can get a, you know, somewhat bad, better at it. But a lot of times you're going to keep circling the same area. It's only after you've had time to kind of digest and reapproach it and your mind gets time to sit with something that you've learned that's new that you're actually going to get better. So consistency, a little bit every day is better than a ton on your Saturday. You aren't figuring out the problems. I see this uh, again constantly. It's people will take apart a song and they'll run through the, the part that they want to learn and they'll just keep going, I, I'm just not good at it. I'm just not good at it. And they just keep playing it, but they don't analyze it. They just think if they repeat it enough or they keep hammering at it, that they'll just figure it out. And this is the old thing of you're practicing harder, but you're not practicing smarter. You can keep banging your forehead into a concrete wall as long as you want. It's never going to give you a breakthrough. And it's kind of stupid to sit there and go, but I've been beating my head against it. Why isn't it breaking? Because you're not taking the time to stop and find out why. And it's that your head isn't hard enough. <laughs> so you've got to take it and start examining and going micro on your playing. I scream about this all the time. The funny thing is, is when you really go micro on something, what winds up happening is you find out there's one tiny thing that's causing the problem of what feels like a, an entire project. It could be that you've been practicing your three finger technique and you don't realize it, but when you're crossing strings, you're resetting your foundation, like you're changing your rotation every time you do it, and that's screwing up everything. So you keep thinking, I just can't play this. I just got to try harder and try harder. And you just keep repeating it over and over, thinking if you just do it with more force or if you just do it longer, it'll work. You have to examine your playing and keep narrowing it down to the tiniest object that you can and it's usually a, one thing is going to be the symptom of what's going on with everything else. Either your pick's not angled right, or one finger stumbling, or your fretting hand keeps, your thumb keeps coming over the neck or something and you don't realize you're doing it. Always micromanage your playing. Odds are there's one thing that's holding you back. It's not just that you can't play a piece, but you're never going to figure it out. 
until you really start examining in incredible detail what it is you're playing and why it's probably wrong. This one's painful because it's so obvious, but it's a fact and it's a big one. I know most people don't do it. You're not listening. When I go to learn a new song, the first thing that I do is listen to it relentlessly for probably a few days. I listen to it at every possible opportunity and I get it embedded in my head so that every bass fill, I know what it sounds like. I know the rhythm of it. I can hear it. I can sing it and just go through it even to the point where if the music isn't playing, I can hear it in my head accurately. You need to do this step. Too many people hear a song, they love it, they run out and grab the tab, or they sit down and try and figure it out, but they don't have any predictive ability. They're sitting there going like, oh, I, I, I'm trying to hear the note and memorize the song while I figure it out, while I get my technique together. It's too much. And it's going to be so much easier when you can already hear the rhythm and the notes and everything, one, to figure it out, or if you're doing a technique or something that's part of a song or something, that you really listen to how it sounds when it's done. You'll be able to internalize it and be able to know when you're wrong more often. If you don't know well enough what the material is that you're trying to work on, you don't really know what it is that you're doing wrong all the time. You'd be amazed at how good your recall is. It's kind of like, how come so many people who aren't professional musicians, things like that, can grab a mic at karaoke night and sing along half the time with a song that they've never learned, they've never tried to do, anything like that. They're not musicians. It's because they've just heard it passively over and over so that the melody and the rhythm and everything are embedded. I've heard people that are actually really good at it that never train. It's because it's in here first that you know it and you've internalized it. So now it's just a matter of putting your hands in the spots where you're already kind of familiar. It goes a long, long way to actually learning something. So you need to learn something, you need to dedicate it to memory, and you need to internalize it. The way you know that you're ready to learn a piece of music or a piece of material is when you can hear it in your head accurately without having the recording when you can sing along to it, when you know the sound of the melodies coming up and you can accurately just kind of almost air guitar along with it, that's when you're ready to attack it. If you try it before that, you're shooting blanks in the dark. You just, nothing's going to come of it because you're trying to predict, analyze, and learn something before you know where it's moving ahead of time. It's impossible. It's just, you're just asking for a lot of agony. So learn and commit it to memory. That's when you're finally ready. The last tip is, it kind of goes back to one of the earlier pieces, but it's basically that you don't make time for it. That every, you allow everything to interrupt it and that robs you of your consistency. Or it makes it that it's something that gets done when you kind of resent it. You know, it's that, well, I'm going to practice once everything else possible in the world I could want to do gets done. And it's like, oh God, now it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm tired and now I'm doing it out of obligation and I'm not really enjoying it. So my mind keeps wandering. You need to make a commitment to yourself. It's like going to the gym or, you know, it, for those of us old enough to remember when some of the shows you had to watch on TV, you had to watch them when they were on, you know, because your parents were cheap and didn't have a video recorder. But <laughs> Having that thing of like, oh, this happens at eight. I got to be there. I got to do that. You'd be amazed that once you keep thinking you don't have time, but once you set that time and you just go, that time's not available. That, that block doesn't exist in the day. All of a sudden, things just kind of work out. That, that friend becomes flexible. That's cool, man. I'll show up at eight. We'll watch the movie then. Or your wife says, well, you know, we can have dinner a half hour early. Or, you know, when you make something important, then it just becomes part of that daily schedule. Maybe it's something you do before work. Maybe you like getting up in the morning and that's when you feel mentally fresh. I know one guy that I teach who actually gets like over an hour for lunch. So 
he takes his base to work with him and actually that's his lunch hour and he feels great. He's like, I, you know, instead of just sitting here surfing the web or screwing around at a store, I get to stop and have something I feel really good about. And then I go back to the second half of my day at work and I'm like, man, I really worked out and I figured out this part and I did all this stuff. He gets an hour in every day, eats his lunch, practices his base. But carve out that time so that it's not an afterthought that you're doing out of obligation or exhaustion or something else. And make it something that you enjoy, that you look forward to. You know, have it be that time of day where you get to check out. Because if you don't make it enjoyable and if you don't make it an appointment that's something that takes priority, then it's never going to be enjoyable and it's never going to become a priority. That's when the consistency kicks in, that type of thing. I guarantee you. Like I said, try it for 30 days. That's when a lot of this stuff kicks in. Uh, students that, and I've advertised it on the channel before, have done like boot camp sessions with me or things like that. Or the reason why I use, usually do sessions in four session blocks is I get somebody into a cycle. And people who drop out before then usually don't recover. People who stick with the 30 day, I find a lot of times if they keep that momentum going, it becomes a new habit and it's something that works for them on the regular. So those things will lead to success for you. They'll hopefully be things you can keep in mind as we're moving forward. Like I said, we're going to uh, do the elephant gun transcription, do the Billy Sheehan solo, but do the whole song. Going to get that knocked out. So that'll be copping up in pieces. Uh, I've got some, you know, kind of riffs and ideas and uh, some stuff to really kind of maybe bust you out of some habits that you have or just some fun licks and stuff for us to work on together. So if you approach them with these habits, you'll get a lot out of it. So do you recognize any of these habits in yourself? Uh, is your practice less than what you feel? And what do you feel like are the things that have knocked you back? What do you think are things that hold you back or reasons why you don't feel like you're progressing? Hit me up in the comments. Let's see about some of the things maybe I didn't think about during here or some situations that you've dealt with that maybe you busted out of something and you realized it was due to a tip that might help everybody who hangs out on the channel. So let's talk about it. I will see you down there in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for joining me here. I hope this stuff helps and I will see you on the next one.